There are a lot of different tools for painting in oil. Of course, there's a variety of brushes, but one of the best tools is the palette knife or painting knife. You can use it for mixing paint on the palette itself, and you can also use it for applying paint. Most people, when they think of a palette knife, think of the thick buttery strokes that a palette knife can often make. But I wanna show you a few other ways to use it for blending colors and for thin, long strokes and also for dabbing to get certain highlights and other random effects. So let's take a look at this knife and what it can do for you. Artist knives come in all shapes and sizes. They all have handles. And they come to various points. And the ones I'm going to be using in this video are the tapered kind with straight sides. Medium sized ones, not big, not small. It's a palette knife if you use it on the palette to mix paint, and it's a painting knife if you use it to apply paint to the canvas. Now the first and most obvious use for this tool is for mixing paint on the palette. My palette is made of polyethylene coated paper, freezer paper basically. I like to mix up a quantity of paint on the mixing surface. That way I don't have to keep mixing it with a brush. Brush is not nearly as effective for mixing color as a palette knife is. You can mix a more exact quantity of paint and exact color using the palette knife. And then when I do a mixture like this, I try to give a little bit of a range of color. There's a little greener on the right and more purpley on the left. So I have some variation. So the purpose for all this paint is to paint this gradation of blue water behind these dinosaurs. Another use for the palette knife is for dabbing highlights on a form. Here I'm painting a rough textured form, kind of like anthracite coal. And instead of using a brush, I'm dropping those highlights in with the palette knife. This gives a thicker blob of paint and a much more unpredictable shape. Here I'm doing the same thing in the final painting. Using the palette knife instead of the brush to lay down some sparkly highlights. Assuming this dinosaur dunked its head under water, it would probably be wet and you get those highlights. These textures appear everywhere, including in a forest, not just light shapes, but also dark ones, the random textures of the leaves. So if I take some darker values, and drop them in there with a knife, I can get some interesting random textures to build the leaf shapes over. And let's talk about knife edging. And I'm gonna use this black treated cardboard, it's smooth cardboard with uh, matte medium and now oiled up. You can allow that stroke to release the paint onto the surface. And you can get some very fine lines this way. This might be for hair or feathers or palm fronds. Push that knife, push the paint into uh, the edge of the knife. The pre-texturing helps if you drag it across that to release some of the paint. I can just lightly drop either a thin line or dab it a little bit. This is a good alternative to a brushed line for hair because it has an unexpected randomness that 
makes it hard to tell how it was done. Now I'm using it on the painting to create the effect of those palmettos past the foot and I'm dragging it. I could use a brush for this but the palette knife gives me thicker paint and a more random application. This painting has quite a bit of palette knife work on it, both in the trees and in the ground and also in those feather textures on the dinosaurs. I'm spraying it with a picture varnish now that it's done. The thicker paint was able to dry because it had some cobalt dryer in it. Let's move on to a different painting. One of the Tyrannosaur coming out of the forest. And here I'm using the palette knife to paint some of the ground textures. Some are in light, some are in shadow. If you look at actual palmettos, which I photographed in Florida, there is a ton of randomness in this texture. And here I'm using knife edging to get those little wisps of feathers on the neck of the T-Rex. A knife blend is simply a different way to blend a gradation of colors. Instead of using a brush, which is what most people do, you can do it with a palette knife or a painting knife. Because I'm working to deadline on this project, I'm using cobalt dryer. Here's what the jar looks like. And it's a dark sort of purplish liquid that you use in the white. A small bit, a drop in the white is enough to help that paint set up overnight. Some people mix cobalt dryer into the painting medium. Uh, as long as it gets into all the mixtures, it'll work. But thoroughly mix it into the white. And any thick paint that you use in the painting will probably involve some white, so it'll help it dry. Okay, let's start with a piece of black matte board, some acrylic medium that to seal it. That's dry now. And I put a little cobalt dryer in the white so that it dries quicker. Just white and black so we can practice the gradation. Here's the shape I want to fill with a gradation from black on the left to white on the right. Let's start with the black. Just pick up some pure black and make kind of a vertical stripe. Now let's mix a little bit lighter, kind of a dark gray, and just loosely place that bar of gray next to the black. Then a range of middle gray. It doesn't have to be perfectly mixed, obviously, just uh, getting some pigment down there. And then lighter. We can clean off the palette knife easily with a rag and then use some closer to pure white over on the right. So now we got some pigment down across the whole area where we want the gradation. Now by making small circular motions with the palette knife, we can start to mix the colors. And this works differently from having a brush do the gradation because the way that palette knife doesn't carry the pigment. Now I'm going to use my left hand here and smooth this across. And this is, I'm having a hard time because this palette knife has a downward bend to the tip. Sometimes it takes a minute to get the hang of it. Okay, there we go. Then remove the paint from the palette knife so we go to the dark area. So this way you can get a, an amazingly smooth gradation that doesn't look like a brushed gradation. So for example, I used a palette knife gradation for this painting. So from the sun on the left over to the right, that whole gradation is done with the painting knife. 
So here I've got about six or seven pools of color, ranging from reddish on the left to bluish on the right. And I place it a little less thickly here than I did on the other one, sample. I want it to be bluish at the top and to kind of go through some grays and working my way down to warmer colors at the bottom. I place just enough pigment to give me coverage, but not too much. Using those small circular motions. And then toward the bottom we go down into oranges and dull reds near the bottom of the sky, near the top of the mountains. By lightly brushing across this, we can get an enamel-like surface with a fairly smooth gradation. And really one of the final uses of the palette knife is for removing paint at the end of the day. And I like to do that so I start with a clean surface tomorrow. If I'm not going to be painting for a while, there's no point leaving paint on the, uh, on the palette. And you can use a much bigger, heftier looking palette knife for this job and save the little ones for painting. The goal of these painting techniques is to make the painting into a window to take you into the world. This has been an excerpt from a longer oil painting tutorial called Unconventional Oil Techniques. And in the full video, I'll take you through the painting of all three of these dinosaur paintings from start to finish, including the sketches. And I'll also take you through each of these 11 painting tutorials that demonstrate the unusual techniques that I use uh, for various painting assignments. If you want to see another sample from the series, check on this link here or click on this one here. Don't forget to subscribe down here. And down in the description, I've got lots of links to materials, download tutorials, and DVDs. Thanks for watching and remember the spirit of invention and experimentation. That's the key to learning to paint.